Well, <laughs> looks like we meet again. And I also found out who brought me the you-know-what of the you-know-who. And let's just say that they won't be saying anything else for a long time. However, it did come with a price. The next job I did was quite a shock, and... Well, well, you, you'll just see what else happened. Okay. So I finished another job that was quite exhausting, but I got paid well for it. And then I received another job notification for my tactical glasses. Now, these glasses were, of course, made by the one and only Eagle Eye. <laughs> he made these sunglasses for me to see through, but when you're facing me, you can't see what I see through them. And, well, plus I'm on my own again, since my team and I did the last job together. We had fun with that, but, but now we went our separate ways. Anyways, I opened it up using my black gloves, which Eagle Eye connected them through, and I read it said that this job wanted me to break into a known place called Club 33, which we all know is in Disneyland. I double-checked to see if they meant in Disneyland or Disney World, but it was clear that it was in Disneyland. So I contacted the employer as I introduced myself as Ghost. Yeah, you heard the name correctly. I'm no longer Fives, because... Well, because I found out about the person who knew about the job that we all did on the island, and they knew my real identity. I also found out that they have spilled my real name to other people that they knew. Luckily, they didn't know about the names of my team, so I guess that's a lucky break for them. Sadly, I had to fake my own death with that person to the grave to protect the others from being hunted down. I threw my dog tags in the fire with them, but... Hey, I'm no Simon Riley, so Fives, or in this case my real name, no longer exists. You following me? From now on, there is only Ghost. I told Eagle Eye, and he understood, in a way, on why I did what I had to do. And he'd still help me on what other missions that I may have. Anyways. I talked to the employer about the job that they selected me for, and they said that they have or, well, had a resource who was in Club 33 and found secrets that no one had seen before. However, he was compromised and didn't really get the chance to grab the evidence. And sadly, they haven't... Well, they haven't heard from him since. But one thing is for sure is that they found out that he told his story about what he saw but that they feared that they got to him because of what he knew and that he hasn't updated since then. In fact, I did hear his story of breaking into Club 33 a while back, and I accepted the job offer on those grounds. They sent me a picture of who they called Joe, or the guy who went missing. I told them I'd send them whatever evidence I could find in there and possibly find Joe. If by any chance he is being held somewhere in Club 33, I highly doubt it, but, you know, who knows? Disney is known for keeping a lot of dark secrets. The next day came about, and as I drove down on my motorcycle to Disneyland and parked it in the parking lot, I went along with the crowd who were anxious to get in the amusement park. I made it past security, and I explored the park. I remembered going there since I was a kid, seeing a lot of people, being happy, taking photos and vlogging, even though it really didn't exist at that time. Uh, personally, I wish it stayed that way. Anyways, I, I then found Club 33, and, well, sadly, I won't tell you how I entered, because it is classified, <laughs> and I don't want any of you pulling the same stunt that I did to avoid you from being banned from Disneyland. Let's just say that the inside was interesting. I saw a lot of art, small palm trees, a small boat replica of Steamboat Willie, a painted picture of Walt Disney, big stairs heading into, I suppose, was the dining area. But then I heard footsteps coming my way. I had to rush myself in a janitor's closet. 
I had my gear in my backpack, so I changed into it quickly. And of course it was the same gear I used from Discovery Island, but with a new ghost balaclava. I put on my balaclava on and got out of the closet and made my way to an elevator. Which I remembered in the story that Joe had mentioned that he went through here. I was still cautious, though. I finally made it to the elevator. I then went inside, and there were the elevator keys to my left. If I remembered correctly, Joe pushed the number three twice. I did that, and then I heard, Welcome back, Walt, through the speakers. Holy shit, it actually works, I said to myself. As the elevator took me down, I then felt that we were going deeper underground. The elevator came to a stop. I opened the gate, and I went into what looked like a small basement. It had a ton of papers piled on one side and, and boxes stacked up on the other. I started to record with my small camera that Eagle Eye had given me from a POV angle attached to my vest. I then got a whiff of a bad odor. Shit, that... Oh, that reeks. I said, trying to ignore the smell for a bit. I then looked around and went through some of the piles of paper, and some of the boxes. Nothing special, just ground area rules. A map to where the tunnels connected so that the mascots could get through to the park. It was interesting. Also, I found ideas from movies that already had been created. I then went further into a corner, and then I saw a small desk which appeared to be sparkling clean, with no trace of a single dust speck. I saw sticky notes on the desk, and, and by the look of it, it had words that involved the Freemasons. <laughs> now we're talking, I whispered again. And to my surprise, I saw a box with a gray tape with writing that was labeled Suicide Mouse. I looked at it shocked. Fuck, it, it does exist, I said, whispering as I opened the box and showing the tape on my camera. I then saw a big black cube in the corner. I looked at it closely and realized that it was a freezer. I thought to myself, is what I think inside there. I opened up the freezer, my eyes widening. My heart felt like it had just stopped forever. It was true. It, it was right there in front of me, true as day. It was the frozen head of Walt Disney inside of a frozen container. Lord have mercy, I said while I held the container turning it as I kept the film rolling. I then put it back. Jesus, I said. But then the odor became stronger and it smelled horrible. Ugh. No mames. What is that smell? I asked. But as I was getting my shit together, I then heard the elevator coming down to this level. Shit, gotta hide, I said in my mind. I then hid behind the cornered boxes, and then the smell got even stronger. I saw two huge guys coming out of the elevator and looked around to see if anything was missing. Luckily, they didn't see me as they went back into the elevator, and as they did that, it then smelled that horrible smell again. I then followed the smell of where it led to, and to my horror, I well, I thought I felt my spirit leave my body. I found Joe. He was slit from his throat and had many cuts on his stomach. His corpse was left down there, and I guess they waited to get rid of him later. Damn, Joe, I, I can't believe that these bastards did this to you. I said. I then took out my tiny cross that I carry for whenever I go on these missions. I know God is always protecting me. Also, since I made that promise to the big man, I go to church every Sunday now, since I survived the big mission. 
I place it on Joe's chest. Rest easy, brother. I said. I got the evidence I needed. Now it was time to leave. As I got to the elevator, I pressed the key to the second floor. I stepped out, and to my surprise, I got ambushed by the two huge men. What do you think you're going, hotshot? Big guy A asked. I stayed quiet. Ah, oh, strong silent type, huh? Well, we can definitely fix that. Big Guy A said again, as they were taking me to a black door which said, Off Limits, on it. Hey, I think this guy is one of those guys who went into that island in Florida, Big Guy B said. Shit, they knew about that? I said in my head. Oh yeah, I remember about that in the news. Does he have a scar on the left side of his face? <laughs> Let's see. Big Guy B said, chuckling, as he was about to take off my mask. Aw, oh, hell no. I thought to myself, I backheaded Big Guy B on his lips, and he dropped me, and I got free. I then elbowed him in the stomach as he fell to his knees, and then I elbowed him in the face. I then faced Big Guy A, and I open-palmed his throat. As he looked down at an angle, I kneed his face, and they were both knocked out. I grabbed my backpack from Big Guy B, and then I tried to make my exit through the front door, but there was security at that point. Oh crap. Oh shit, I said to myself. He tried to grab me, but he missed. I then saw a lady behind the counter. Shot her a glance. Hello, miss, I said to her. She waved back awkwardly. I then bolted towards the stairway onto the dining room. As I locked it, I then saw from behind me that there were people looking shocked, thinking as if I was going to kill them or take them hostage. Relax, folks. Carry on with what you're doing. I'm just trying to get out of here, I said while raising my right hand. As I was making my way through the outside balcony, I then saw a familiar face, like something I've seen in a movie. I couldn't believe it. It was Mika Bora. One of my childhood crushes that I've had since middle school. She was so pretty. I, I looked at her, and she did the same. Oh, wow, this is, um... Uh, this is embarrassing. But, uh, hello, Miss Borum. I know you don't know me, but you are one of my childhood crushes that I've had when I was younger, and... Well, it's an honor to finally meet you. Well, frankly, this was kind of an awkward way to meet you under these circumstances... She giggled a little. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm flattered. And actually, I have heard of you. You're the guy who went to that island in Disney World. You know, you're actually kind of famous. Sort of, in the police's view. But I always wondered what it would be like to see you in person. And here you are. I was squealing on the inside, like a little kid. <laughs> wow, now I am flattered as well. Miss Bora, I said while trying to keep my composure. Please, call me Micah, she said. I squealed inside again. Okay, sweet. I'm sorry, I have to rush, but would it be okay if I took a quick picture of you and me? I asked her. She nodded yes. And never have I felt this way at all, knowing that I got to take a picture with my favorite crush. Oh, thank you, Micah. You have no idea how huge this is for me, I said to her. She smiled her beautiful smile at me, and out of nowhere, she kissed me on my baklava cheek. I kid you not, I felt like I was being lifted up into the heavens. It felt amazing. But just as I felt like I was in the air, big knocks came from the door which killed the moon. Shit, I thought to myself, shit, time to go. Thank you, Micah, again, for the picture, I said while heading towards the balcony. Oh, shit, this is high, 
I realized. I then heard the door break down. I did the sign of the cross as I jumped off the balcony. No mommy! As I looked up and saw the big security guys and other security looking down, I smiled through my mask. I then started to run from the entrance of the Pirates of the Caribbean ride to entering Main Street, USA. However, there was a bit of a problem. A parade was performing, and the security force was already behind my ass. So I had to run between the parade performance. As I was running, I was dodging all the performers and the big animatronics. I dodged left and right from everybody, plus to make it difficult for security to follow, and I can tell people were staring at me. At the time I heard music, what I guess was about a, a rotten core, but it sounded like a villain song. But to be fair, it was around Halloween season, so it was suited at the time. As I continued rushing through the parade, I then ran to the entrance of the park, and three security guards tried to grab me. I dodged all three of them. <laughs> well, the three stooges of security can't catch anyone for shit, can you? I said to them, while laughing and running. I then made it to the parking lot, and I got on my motorcycle and drove off. After all the excitement, I then mailed the video evidence to my employer. And yes, I edited out the part where I met Micah, and not look foolish. I also left a note saying, that I found Joe, and I was sorry. I then headed to a nearby bar of my house, and yes, I kept my gear on. Besides, it was a bar club for mercenaries where anyone can be dressed as anyone. With the song Die Born by Days of the News being played in the background, I sat down at a bar table and had a few drinks with my mask half off. On the next drink, I said, Here's to you, Joe. Even though we never met in person, cheers, mate. I then saw the breaking news about... about some clown girl who had been on the run, who was also wanted for murdering her sister, and blabbed out something about breaking out of jail, promising to kill her former friend. Well, that's something you don't hear every day. I heard someone say on my right. I saw a big guy taking a seat next to me. Indeed, I replied. How are you doing, Mr... Call me Ghost, I said to him. Ghost, huh? Why? Because if something hits you, it goes right through you or something? <laughs> no, 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 it's... It, it's for a whole different reason. You wouldn't understand. I see. Well, the name's Barney, and I guess it's good to finally meet you in person, Ghost. Or is it Fives? He asked. How the fuck do you know? But then Barney cut me off. Don't worry. I'm not here to fight you. I have my ways of knowing who's who. And... I know about the son of a bitch who tried to make your life a living hell. But I gotta say, I'm impressed on what you and your team did on the job that you accepted from a mutual employer of mine, he said. Trench, I replied. He nodded his head. I sat back down calmly, having another drink. Nice tattoo, I said to him as I looked at his tattoo, which had a crow or a raven standing on a skull. That's actually what I came here to talk to you about, he said. Is that right? I replied. Indeed. Let's talk some business, 